the clay is not quarried as other minerals are, it is washed out of the ground with strong hoses. Then the mixture of clay and water has to settle and be dried before Bill and Ben can take it away. Part of the line which the twins use to reach the china clay workings runs near the sea. There is a hollow in the land just here which often floods after heavy rain. Local people call this hollow the drain. The autumn gales which had brought down the farmer's tree for Trevor to cut up were also causing rough seas and high tides. When rain came too, the engine crews looked gloomy. A really high tide now, said Ben's driver, could make real trouble at the drain. But though pools of water lay on either side of the line, they grew no larger. Bill and Ben puffed happily to and fro, replacing loaded hoods with empty ones. They forgot about the drain. Then the rain began again, and the wind strengthened. As the engines went to the clay pits that morning, their drivers noticed that the water in the drain was rising. While Bill arranged the empty trucks, Ben prepared to leave with a train of full ones. At the drain, he found that the water was level with the top of the rails. Come on, said Ben bravely, we must get through, if only to get help for Bill. Go back, go back, the wind seemed to speak. Ben took no notice. He was halfway over when the rising tide, whipped into a huge wave by the wind, swept across the line. Oof! spluttered Ben as water crashed against his side. Help! With a hiss, the water reached his fire. Quick Ben urged his driver, but it was too late. With a despairing gasp, Ben stopped. He was stranded in the middle of the drain with cold seawater lapping his wheels. The fireman set off to find help. Keep on the sleepers, advised the driver. We don't want you swamped as well. The water reached the fireman's waist, but he struggled on. At last, cold and soaking, he reached the yard. Thomas was there, wondering where his trucks were. His driver wasted no time. Ben must be rescued, he said. We need a steel cable, a pair of waders, and determination. Yes, said Thomas, doubtfully. He understood the cable, but he wasn't sure about determination and didn't even know what waders were. Thomas stopped at the water's edge. His fireman put on the waders and set out, carrying the end of the cable. Ben was delighted to see him. The fireman fastened the cable end to Ben's front coupling. Then he uncoupled the trucks so that Bill, who had come up behind, could pull them clear. Right, he said as he joined Ben's driver in the cab. Let's go! Poor Ben had no steam left to whistle, so the driver and fireman waved to show Thomas they were ready. Carefully, Thomas took the strain as he pulled Ben. Slowly, with water cascading all round him, Ben came out of the drain. Once he was clear, Thomas was properly coupled to him and helped him back to his shed. Thank you, Thomas, said Ben gratefully, and his eyes twinkled for the first time for several hours. It was four days before the water had been subsided. When Bill reached home, both twins agreed that he would be ungrateful for the 